Hey, welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and the wife and I recently went to Southeast Game Exchange, which is a big retro gaming convention that takes place down in South Carolina. Yes? Yes. And we went there, um, we showed up, there were lots of games to buy. If you've never been, it's a cool event. This is our second year going. Um, they had some, some kind of actually like bigger YouTubers this year. Like, uh, I see Boogie and I think Metal, yeah, Metal Jesus Rocks was there. Um, quite a few other people that you might recognize. Um, but the biggest thing for me was buying retro games. So that's what the wife and I did. Now, I'll say this about conventions. They don't always offer the best deals, and that was the case this time. There were times where we got some okay deals, but then there were other times where it felt like, not even felt like, I, 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 could, I knew. We were overpaying a little bit for the games, but we didn't have to order them online, which neither the wife or I like to do. We like to find it in person if we can, and there was such a wide selection of games that we found a lot of things that we had been looking for for a while now and then just we just couldn't find anywhere else. So it was a really cool event. Uh, we had a lot of fun and I'm going to start off showing off some of the stuff we grabbed. I'm actually going to grab not games because the wife picked up a couple of uh, random things. This is a Lugia model kit. It's kind of too big for my current setup to show the whole thing off. It's a model kit, you build it, it's cool. She's been on the uh, on the lookout for this Lugia one specifically for about a year now, I think, and she saw some there, so she grabbed it. And next, oh my gosh, this is way too big. This is a Raichu plushie. He's big, he's a lot bigger than I thought he was. He's massive. She picked this up too, kind of game related, I guess. Same with the Lugia model because they're Pokemon, but she likes plushies. She bought a Lugia last year at Southeast Game Exchange. This time, she bought a Raichu. And on that same note, we let our little 11-month-old son, Cyrus, pick out a Pokemon plushie, a little Pokemon plushie. This one's obviously much smaller, so he can handle it. Um, she showed him the three starters, and he picked Squirtle. So he has a Squirtle now. It's kind of cool. Now we actually get to talk about games, and I'm going to go over what the wife grabbed first. And the first one is this, Pokemon Black version, except it's not, because the wife already had Pokemon Black version, but it was missing its manual, and a guy there was selling this as a set, he wouldn't sell just the manual to her. So she had to buy the box with it as well, but now she has a completed copy of Pokemon Black version, which is nice, but that also does mean that we now have a random Pokemon Black case. So who knows what will happen with that. All right. Uh, to look at some of the other purchases the wife made, she picked up Blinks 2, Masters of Time and Space. Uh, she recently bought Blinks 1. Um, I don't actually have any experience with these games. I know they're 3D platformers, I know they're well-reviewed, I know there's a lot of people that would like for Microsoft to revisit the series, and they haven't. But the wife has been interested. We found this for... this one was actually a pretty good price. Um, that's weird that it's upside down. What? What? Okay, I don't know anything about Blinks, so this has just completely confused me. Okay, all right, we're not gonna spend too much time on that. I'm confused. She also grabbed uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy for the PS2. Uh, we have that multi-tap I showed off in the previous collection video, so we can do the four-player on this if we want. And it is in pretty good shape. It is complete. Everything's pretty nice looking. The case has a little bit of a 
dust. I think it's on the front. Yeah, but we can we can clean that off pretty easy. That that won't be hard to get rid of. She also grabbed uh, Digimon World 4, which, if I remember right, this one goes more hack and slash, whereas Digimon World 3 was turn-based RPG, which that's the one I, I grew up playing. And then 1 and 2 are actually like virtual pet simulators, like raising them. And this is yet again complete, full games, all that jazz. I'm not going to pull everything out of the... I'm not going to pull all the disc out. That's just... Assume the discs are in good shape because we wouldn't have bought them if they weren't. Um, I actually looked at multiple copies of Dark Cloud 2 at the convention. I found like four different copies and three of them were not complete in one shape or another and then the other one that I found that was complete, the disc was scratched to pieces and I had no desire whatsoever to buy it because I didn't think it would play. But moving on, the wife also made some big PS3 purchases including three, uh, blah, 3D Game Heroes, which uh, this is a From Software game, very much a throwback kind of love letter to the original Reg Legend of Zelda, and I've never played it. We've always, you know, I've seen it, I've heard about it before. She wanted it. It's got that nice little fun reversible art that's kind of minimalistic. Um, but yeah, this is one that we wanted to pick up, and then the, uh, the PS3 market scare happened, and caused a lot of games to jump in price and because of that we held off on grabbing these for a while but prices have finally started to come back down and that's why she picked this up and that also explains the next purchase she made which is folklore uh, this one has slight water damage the art is slightly wavy but it's not really faded in any way, shape, or form, so it's fine. And uh, they knocked off some money from the price because of that, but it is complete. It's got the manual and everything like that. So that was her final purchase. And now we're gonna get on to my purchases. But I'm just gonna show this off first. Um, I bought this at Southeast Game Exchange. It's not a game, but I think it counts as game related. And that is the uh, old Anime Legends box set for Dot Hack Sign. All of it's there. Um, it actually still has that like that new DVD case smell. And I looked at the disc, and none of them look like they've even been touched. So I just assume like somebody watched this once, and it's been sitting in their collection, uh, which is a dang shame because Dot Hack Sign is an incredibly good uh, anime. It also is an incredibly good game series, the Dot Hack games. Uh, I love them. Uh, geez, up to I've played up to the GUs, not all of them. I don't. I don't think I've played the final GU. But either way, um, I have a lot of love for the Dot Hack series. I had a copy of Dot Hack Sign. It was one of those old bootlegged ones in cardboard cases uh, that back in the day I didn't know was a bootleg, so I just bought it. And I had that for a while until one of the discs cracked, and then I haven't really been able to watch it since then. So finding this there was actually really awesome. And I know that's, like I said, kind of game related, kind of not, but I thought I'd show it off. And I'm going to show off these next few games in kind of like, almost like a genre order, I guess. And I'm going to look at Hack and Slash first. Um, the first one being Maximo. Ghost to Glory, which um, if you've ever played a Ghost and Goblins game, then you know that this is basically a 3D reinvention of that. If you've never played a Ghost and Goblins game, then uh, you have made it into this world so far lucky, because those games can be quite cruel and require you to beat them twice, and it frustrates me, even though I have very much enjoyed them and beat two of them, I think. But it's here, it's complete. Everything's nice looking. I've never played. I've never played the Maximo games. Um, there's two of them. Army of Zen might be the second one if I'm remembering right. But either way, um, I did want to actually get a chance to look into them, and I found this there for a decent enough price that I grabbed it. And next up is Knight's Contract for the Xbox 360. Now this um, it's actually made by the same developer who did Folklore, as well as. Uh, a couple of other, like, noteworthy games that I can't remember. But this was the last game the studio made, if I can find it here on the back. Um, I'm not seeing who I'm looking for. But, um, the studio's dead now, anyway. But uh, this was their last game they made, 
and I only found out about it um, a couple years ago, and I've been on the lookout for it since then, and it's been particularly hard to find, but I did happen to see a copy um, while I was there. The guy I was talking to, the vendor even mentioned that he's like, that he said that he, you know, rarely ever sees copies of it uh, in his whole entire time being a vendor for the several years. He's only seen two copies, which I've only seen one, and I picked it up because I was like, shoot, I don't want to risk not seeing it again, and I have it. It's not even necessarily supposed to be a great game, but it's one that I keep thinking about. It just keeps kind of popping up in the back of my mind as like, this is a game I really want to try out. I want to play, I want to experience it. So yeah, I'm kind of hoping it'll just scratch that itch where like, even if it's not a great game, it's something that I enjoy. I'm kind of hoping that's the feeling I get from it. All right, so those were our hack and slashes. Um, next, I'm gonna move up to, well, this whole section is gonna be mecha, honestly. I, I bought quite a few mecha games, but I'm gonna start with Gundam. Uh, Gundam Crossfire for the PS3. This was a launch title for the PS3. I remember um, back when it came out, there was a lot of promotions about how like the dust would settle on your mobile suit in real time if you were sitting still and sniping and stuff like that. Um, it got, it got bad reviews in America when it came out, but since then I've heard positive things about it from people specifically in the Gundam community. So I wanted to make sure I gave it a shot. I found it for dirt cheap, and I didn't have a PS3 back when PS3s came out, by the way, so I missed out on a lot of games. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to I'm excited to play this one. I, I really hope that it'll surprise me in, in some way and not actually be like the massive disappointment that reviews said it was. Next up, we have uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Encounters in Space, and this takes place in the second half of the One Year War as well as, um, as you can see from the cover, it's the GPO-1 Full Burnin, which is from 0083 Stardust Memory, so a little bit after the One Year War. Um, it also includes the, I think it's Thoroughbred is what it's called, um, which is a side story that covers the RX-78-4 and 5, which were sister units. I won't go like too much into that, but I'm a big fan of their design. I have their master grades up on my wall right now. And yeah, I was excited to see this because I've been looking for it. It acts as a kind of sequel to Journey to Jaburo, if you've uh, seen that one. It's another PS2 Gundam game, and it is complete. Everything is in good shape. Um, I wanted to look there because I don't actually know what all suits are in here, but something in my mind told me I just saw Burning Gundam from G Gundam, and that would be odd. Maybe. Oh, it's it's in the ad on the back. Okay, I was gonna say I don't know why G Gundam would be here. All right, sorry. I won't go like too super nerdy into details, except actually I, I kind of will, um, because this is Another Century's episode three, the final, and the Another Cent the Another Century era games are basically uh, if you've ever seen the Super Robot Wars games, which are giant crossovers between a bunch of mecha series, but they're turn-based strategy games, right? This is an action game, and as you can see here, we've got you know there's from Gundam Seed. Which, okay, sure, Gundam, all right, you know, another century, I, I can get that. But then we've also got uh, Overman King Gainer. We've got the Nirvosh from Eureka 7. Of course, we've got Shingeta Robo. Um, I think that might be from Aura Battler Dunbine. I'm not sure on that. Obviously, we've got the new Gundam. Um, that almost looks like a Zone of Enders unit, but I don't actually know that. I haven't played Zone of the Enders, and I need to. Wing Gundam, uh, Dragonair... Dragonair, Drag, Dragonair, gosh, I'm gonna mess that up. G Gundam, um, Turn A Gundam, we've got a Valkyrie from, um, I mean, okay, whenever I see it, I think Roy Foker's Valkyrie from Robotech, but I obviously, I know it's from Macross. Um, but yeah, and this is basically a big old, big old crossover game. It's uh, pretty neat if you've never played them. I've been looking for them and I happened to see it. I was actually looking for an Armored Core game whenever I spotted this one and I was like, oh, okay, I'll I'll grab this. Um, oh, uh, Gundam X in there too. Gundam X is a really cool series. Uh, it, it doesn't get enough attention in the Gundam community, I think. It's really, it's a really fun one. And the full disc, the manual, 
Everything is here. Um, yeah. And that was all of the, Gund the, the Gundam games, as I called them. Uh, we're actually going to move on to Armored Core with Armored Core Master of Arena. This is the last of the PS1 Armored Core games, and it's the last of the PS1 Armored Core games that I needed to get my hands on. Um, I've been holding off a little bit on playing more of the Armored Core games because I was hoping to find some so I could play some of them in a, in a more rapid, sequential order, hopefully. Maybe not like reviews quite like that. But... I'm actually playing Project Phantasma right now, which is the second PS1 game, as a follow-up to my original Armored Core review, which is doing pretty well on the channel. It's got like something like 2,000 views, which is uh, crazy. I, I think I've found that there's quite a few people that enjoy From Software games that have been watching some of my videos, because some of my most popular videos are From Software games, which, uh, just to backtrack real quick, this is a From Software game as uh, well, if I can get the glare out of there. Yeah. That another century game is from From Software. Uh, so I've got Master of Arena now, which means I'm open to playing through the Armored Core games, maybe at a at a faster rate. I don't want to just binge the games because I feel like it's good to uh, switch up and play different styles so that like it doesn't start to like dull your senses just playing the same kind of game over and over again, you know? But I've also been collecting Armored Core games and I found Nexus there. And Nexus is a cool one because it's a two-disc PS2 game. One of these discs is the main game of Armored Core Nexus. And the other disc is, actually, you can check here, yeah, Revolution, is a whole bunch of missions from previous Armored Core games remade in this new engine so you can go and play through some of like the highlight classics and stuff like that which is a really neat thing to do i think that's a really cool concept and then we have armored core verdict day for the xbox 360 and give me just a second because this is sealed And if you follow this channel, you know that I always open sealed games. I don't believe in just putting games on the shelf and not play them. I actually walked into a store, one of the vendors at Southeast Game Exchange uh, had graded copies of games sitting on their shelf, and I immediately just turned around and left, because uh, that is not what I want to see happen with retro gaming. I, I don't want it to become this money laundering scheme of speculators and things like that. I would hate to see that happen. So I don't support anybody that does it. That's just kind of my personal thing. Um, yeah. Can I... Ah, I didn't get it cut quite all the way. Give me just a second. Alright. No manual, because some games just didn't come with manuals back in the day. But that is Armored Core uh, 5 Verdict Day, or V Verdict Day, I don't remember, I don't know how it's actually said. But, with this and some other purchases I have made, um, I haven't actually got to like, go over all of the recent collecting I have been doing, because uh, I haven't wanted to flood the channel with it. But, with these, I am now only one slash two games short of having all the Armored Core games I want. I still need to get... Um, Silent Line for the PS2, and then I have Formula Front Extreme on the PSP, but there's a Japanese version that's in full English that includes um, some more missions and stuff like that, and I'd like to get my hands on that. That's why I was looking around at there's a store that specifically carries imports, and that's how I found the Another Century game, but I was looking for that PS2 version of Formula Front. So I'm still on the lookout for... Uh, two more Armored Core games. One is all it would take for me to consider my collection complete, but I would like to find the other one if I could. And that is all of the mecha games, by the way, so we're going to be moving on to JRPGs. And our first one is Final Fantasy Echoes of Time. Uh, Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time. Uh, the Crystal Chronicle games, I've enjoyed the original. I wanted to expand and get onto the others. I've played Crystal Bearers all the way through. I have... The Rings of Fate, which is the other game in the series. There's also a couple of WiiWare games that are sadly no longer up for purchase, if I'm remembering right. 
But with this, I have all of the physical Crystal Chronicle games that you can buy and play. And it's a series I'd like to get into. I'm always hesitant to jump into Final Fantasy for reviews because it's a series that I really enjoy, but I also know that it would take forever to get through. And I'm trying to con condense down how many ongoing series I have at a time on the channel because I don't want to get too spread out and sporadic, but if I jump into Final Fantasy, it might be interesting to jump into the Crystal Chronicle series first, or maybe the Ivalis series, because there's three or four, well, maybe five games in that series as well. Next up we have Wild Arms 2, which I just recently put up a Wild Arms review. Maybe it's been a couple months from, since then, but... Yeah, well, I put it up. I was very, very proud of it. It's uh, my longest review so far, and um, I'm, I'm really happy with the quality and how it came out. But I do know that eventually I will have to review Wild Arms 2. I've started this game several times and never beaten it. And you might be thinking, hey, wait a second. You said you own Wild Arms 2 at the end of your Wild Arms 1 review. I had it on PSN. Have it on PSN. But with the way the PlayStation Network is going and PS1 Classics... Um, I saw this for a good price, and it was kind of like, you know what, I should, I should make sure I have it physical just in case. Obviously, my like, I still play my PS1 games through my PS3 without you know caring that much, and the and the the network isn't down yet, obviously. But just in case, I was like, I'm gonna grab this as a backup because I wouldn't be surprised to see another scare that causes prices to increase, and yeah, just kind of like a security thing is why I picked this up. And then we have the final game that was picked up, the final item, and I mean that as in the final one we're looking at, and this was a last minute purchase that I just ha I, I happened to spot at a booth I had already been at a couple of times. Uh, it's, it's Makai Kingdom Chronicles of the Sacred Tome. Uh, this is from this. It is um, not technically listed as part of the Disgaea series, but at the same time, um, I'm pretty sure this guy we play as is actually an overlord of his his world's hell, and I know you can run into him in future Disgaea games, so it's it's not technically like a numbered Disgaea entry, but it takes place within that same universe. And yet again, uh, just like before, this is a still sealed copy of the game, which means we're just going to open it. Obviously, it's in great shape because it's a uh, it's a sealed copy. But uh, yeah, you know, there's our disc, there's our manual. Everything looks good. And uh, this guy's another series that I've quite enjoyed, but I've never really touched on the channel because each game is such a massive time sink. That's kind of what I've found with JRPGs is that they're hard to review on the channel and still keep a consistent schedule. It's made me consider, like, maybe if the channel ever gets bigger, I might consider jumping to, like, a video a month and opening that up to me having the ability to play through and review um, more JRPGs, but we're not there yet. I still will be peppering them in from time to time, as well as trying to keep to my normal upload schedule. For the most part, there is actually a caveat there and a small channel update that I did want to mention. It's summertime, there's... A lot to do around my house. Uh, my son's almost a year old now, and I still haven't finished his room. Uh, he doesn't even have a door. I, I have it. It's sitting in my garage. I just haven't put it on. And I've got that and a few other uh, home improvement projects that need taken care of. Uh, for example, the night we came home from Southeast Game Exchange, we had a massive storm come in. And our roof leaked, and it leaked from the door into the garage. And it was, the leak was in the garage from the roof as well. So, like, it didn't do any damage to any of our stuff in our house. And the basement leaked. And it was just like, ah, because we thought, the wife and I thought we had sorted out some of these problems last year. But we hadn't. So, there's currently a tarp and sandbags on top of my house. So, I might have to take a little bit of time away to get some of those projects around the house done while it's summer and it's nice and I have time. But um, until then, you know... I, I guess what I'm saying is, like, I'm going to try to keep videos coming up at a regular schedule of, of every other week right now. But if you see me miss a week 
here or there, understand that it's probably for those reasons. And with that, I've kept you here long enough. Thank you for stopping by. Consider subscribing if you want. If you're interested in uh, retro game reviews, that's something I do a lot of. Uh, I've started doing indies. I've only got one right now. But uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, do any of that jazz if you feel like it. I'm not going to pressure you. Yeah, you know, this isn't peer pressure. But yet again, thank you for stopping by and everybody take it easy.